Hi, I'm Trav. I'm the white male who many years ago started making penance for the archetypal patriarch who drowned the witches and colonized the globe. I walked away from my roles in church and state because I could not be the hand nor the mouthpiece for unjust, murderous institutions. My life path was shaped by a deep cry for justice and equality in relationships. Have you heard about the responsive man who surrendered his toxic masculinity as a less destructive option to continuing in his inherited violence? What can be said about that surrender and the diverse and many ways that that surrender might go wrong? I know something about these things. Cautionary Tales, Stories of Mishap, Maps of Our Interpersonal Terrains We are not obligated to beat ourselves up over our mistakes, but we do have a responsibility to communicate them in constructive ways. Why? Our species has the ability to pass down through the generations the nuanced minutia of our experience, it appears that we are all descended from the ones who, a few million years ago, started crafting tools and never stopped. We weren't the strongest predators, but we discovered a new level of cooperation and communication in ourselves that made us the apex predator. It seems quite clear to many of us that the way we are living now is not working. Our particular brand of intelligence has thunk us into the biggest waste disposal crisis in the history of our world. It's not just the white male who has discovered his own toxicity. This is the state of humanity. The white male? Well, we're just the ones who got caught with our pants down. Yeah, I'm qualified to say these things because I've taken a very long and critical view of my own whiteness and my own maleness. Some of you perhaps think that me, being a white male, must naturally have nothing helpful to add to our conversation. <laughs> I truly hope that is not the case, because after this deep and critical tearing down of my own whiteness and maleness, I believe that I have discovered something deeper within. And I would certainly be honored to have an opportunity to share with you. Yes, these sharings, these diverse and many nuanced ways that we may exchange our love. Being undone in me now are these contractures, these internal malformations caused by a lifetime of emotionally compromised relationships. Cautionary tales, stories of mishap, maps of our interpersonal terrains. We are not obligated to beat ourselves up over our mistakes, but we do have a responsibility to communicate them in constructive ways. Why? An open letter to an ex-wife. I was honest with you. Then you told me that my honesty was too painful for you, which was actually quite understandable. It was understandable that you did not want to hear my honesty because what I called honesty during those stages of my development was often the uprisings of my own yet to be nurtured wounded children. It seems to me so clear now how two deeply hurting human beings could come together like we did. Do you remember all those years ago when I went to therapy? You saw me making the break for freedom, and you went too. Years later, when I finally gained the courage to leave you, it was because I had exhausted myself innumerable times in trying to be that healing point. I know that you too had exhausted yourself in your giving, and I trust that you have discovered within yourself the cure for that sense of abandonment that I could never soothe in you. Are we not 
free to speak of this abandonment now? Yes, we are now free to relate to this abandonment for what it truly is. This sense of abandonment, it is the human condition. Who, you may ask, has been abandoned, and who has done the abandoning? What a beautifully thoughtful question. Thanks for asking. It is we who have abandoned ourselves, self-compromise, a disregard of our depths, and it is quite understandable how this could happen. Also, we may still come into a graceful understanding of how we have unconsciously mistreated one another. In this graceful understanding, we are free. Our freedom is inevitable as we release ourselves to the extent that we can ease ourselves right into the greatest cooperative experiences of our lives. And this is my hope and prayer for you, my old friend. I did learn to listen. And in great part, I learned to listen because I wanted so genuinely to hear you. You, the feminine spirit. The one I saw that my kind, the man, had so deeply wounded in you. I've done my work around all of this. I've done my work to the extent that it can be done in me. Now it is up to us, the channels of the yin and yang, to transcend these conflicts. The pyramid schemes have been real hard on us. And we are all coming home. This is our story, the big story, coming home. One very important part of my work most recently has been in my coming to know and converse and sit with older women. I've been making this peace with the feminine nature and I felt this feminine blessing coming upon me as I've been really just honestly speaking my story out and finding compassion and generosity in the face of these blessed women who, well, it's been such a gift to be able to sit honestly and authentically. Um, there's been quite a few of you recently, enough that I can't just, it, it, that it seems like a pattern. And, and also I'm just hearing that divine voice in every one of these exchanges. Thank God, thank you, I am so grateful. 